Welcome to the second video of our Blue Carbon video series. In this video, we are diving into the role of water within blue carbon systems. Remember, the hydrosphere refers to the total mass of all the Earth's waters. That's where all of our blue ecosystems are. Blue carbon refers to coastal and marine ecosystems that use and store atmospheric carbon. When we are examining blue carbon, we are taking a closer look at the ecosystems within the hydrosphere. These ecosystems use atmospheric carbon to build their leaves, branches, and roots. Shellfish and coral reefs use carbon to construct their shells and body structures. Carbon is also eventually stored in the sediment underneath plants and animals. These ecosystems are referred to as blue carbon because of their ability to sequester and store carbon while existing along coasts or within other bodies of water. Water is one of the largest atmospheric carbon captures on our planet. Today, we will discuss what water is, its properties, and its role within our blue carbon story. Water or H2O, is an inorganic substance existing in various chemical states or forms. As a solid, water is seen in the form of snow, ice caps, and glaciers. Water as a gas can be in the form of water vapor. In its liquid form, water makes up our lakes, rivers, oceans, rains, etc. We most commonly know water in its liquid form. In addition to being found on Earth and constructing many different ecosystems, water is also an important element for supporting life. We need water to exist. All of our organs require water to function and sustain themselves. In fact, Water makes up about 75% of the human body. On a larger scale, water makes up 71% of the planet's surface, and about 96% of the water found on Earth's surface is held by the oceans. That's a lot of water. The water molecule is composed of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom two of the most common atoms found in living organisms. The structure of a water molecule influences its behavior, as well as how it will interact with other elements from the periodic table. One such element the water molecule interacts with is carbon. We see this chemical interaction between carbon and water while water exists in the ocean and carbon is in the Earth's atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide. Their interaction takes place around the surface of our oceans. During the carbon cycle, carbon in its gaseous state exists as carbon dioxide residing in our atmosphere. Our atmosphere reaches as far as 10,000 kilometers high and therefore is very heavy. This weight is referred to as atmospheric pressure, which acts as a weight on the earth and every living and non-living thing on it. Due to the heavy weight of Earth's atmospheric pressure, carbon dioxide is pushed down into the surface of the ocean. Carbon then finds its new home in the Earth's waters. Once on the ocean surface, carbon dioxide will combine with water and form a new substance known as carbonic acid. Eventually, this acid will break down into carbonate ions. Carbonate ions are important as they help shellfish, like oysters and clams, build their shells. In addition, calcium is another element that is found within our oceans. When mollusks are young, their bodies will filter and take the calcium and carbonate in the oceans and combine the two, forming calcium carbonate. Likewise, coral reefs also depend on calcium carbonate to build up and create these underwater cities that contribute to the livelihood of other marine life. 
The formation of calcium carbonate helps contribute to the ocean's overall absorption of carbon, especially once the shells reach the seafloor, where they will become a part of the minerals and sedimentation. The seafloor is where long-term carbon is stored, and this would not be possible if it wasn't for our oceans full of water. Thanks for diving deep. Now you understand the role water plays in our blue carbon story.